Hello, I'm James Hartman, Interim Pastoral Leader of Metropolitan Community Church here in Baton Rouge. We want to thank you for clicking on the video of our worship message. To see the entire service, including music, prayers, scripture readings, and our children's moment, please go to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash mccbr. Plus, you're always welcome to join us live on Sunday mornings. We stream at 11 a.m. Central Time. Stay tuned after the message for more information on how you can stay in touch with us. So hello everyone, welcome to MCC Baton Rouge. Woohoo! Wow! It is, it is a pleasure to be here. Kay and I came over on Thursday. We've been camping at this little place in Livingston. They got a lake and they got geese and they got these two swans named Boudreau and Thibodeau. <laughs> and we have done nothing but eat and sleep and play on TV, I mean on the computer games and watch TV. We've had a very relaxing, hot, oh my God, hot few <coughs> days. Yes. If the air conditioner had died in that camper, we was gonna be knocking on Robert and Mark's door, because it's <laughs> not I'm telling you. But I'm so glad to be back with you today. And I picked this, this particular scripture for you today because I thought, you know what? Sometimes people need to understand that cuddling with church folks is kind of like cuddling with porcupines. Oh, so we all get on each other's nerves sometimes. Yes. Have any of you ever been out to San Francisco, California, crossed over the Bay Bridge into the giant redwood forest? Yeah. I was lucky. I got this boondoggle trip from my old company I worked with, and they paid me to go over to San Francisco for a week to attend a seminar. And I'm going to confess, I didn't do a whole lot of that seminar, and, but I did a whole lot of sightseeing, <laughs> and part of it was uh, over to the Redwood Forest. Those trees are amazing. I mean, some of them, they're the tallest trees in the world. Some of them get like 300 feet high. That's, I, I just, that was just amazing to me. Some of them are over 2,500 years old. Now, you'd think that trees that tall would have a root system that went really, really deep down into the earth. But the truth is, that's not the case. Redwoods have a pretty shallow root system that reaches only as wide as the branches reach out. So you picture, all right, let's take this down to our size. Picture a pine tree. Pine trees are tall, but they're kind of skinny, really. I mean, when you compare them to oaks and elms and sycamores, pine trees are kind of like this. So their root system only goes out as far as their branches go, which is not really that far. But the thing about the redwood trees is, those roots that are under the ground are intertwined, like this. They're meshed together, tied together, interlocked. So when the storms come in off the ocean, the winds blow the redwoods, they stand, because they're holding on to each other under that ground. I got you, baby. I got you right here. Don't worry about it. With an interlocking root system, they support and sustain each other. If one of them, though, happens to take root some distance away from the others, typically it doesn't live to maturity. It doesn't get to be an adult tree because it's standing out there all on its own. It doesn't have that interlocked root system. These trees need each other. So do we need each Amen. other. God has given us the church, with the big C, the church, which is the body of Christ on earth. And when we're baptized, we're baptized into that body of Christ here on earth. Through Christ, we're bound together like those redwood trees are. By belonging to Christ, we belong to each other. And I don't know about you, but I kind of like that knowledge that I belong to a group. Amen. Because Amen. So, so many times I've not belonged anywhere. Yep. This is somewhere I belong. Yes. Fellowship with Christ means fellowship with each other. Yes. Through Christ, God made us a family of sorts, Amen. a chosen family, Amen. which yeah, is really yeah. special. This is our God-given support system right yes. here. Yes. It gives yes. us strength to withstand life storms, just yes. as the interlocking root system of those giant redwoods gives them strength. Will you join me in prayer, please? Loving God, we come together as a family that belongs together in the body of Christ this morning. We ask God that you would send your spirit into this place and just let it open our minds, open our hearts, open our eyes to see and hear and receive 
what you have for us on this day. These things we pray in your beautiful sacred name. Amen. 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 So our text this morning tells us about the first community of believers. That had to be a pretty tough situation to be in because, you know, you, you were surrounded by people of other faiths and you were this brand new religion called Christianity. And to tell the truth, they were kind of a, like, oddball group. I mean, you were worshiping a, a guy that died and rose again. That's pretty fantastical things to think about when you came from the Jewish tradition where everything was written down and everything had a rule. And all of a sudden, you got this free-thinking group called the Christians. And they seem to be different than everybody else because they choose to be together and they love one another outrageously. I mean, they love one another just, it's just an amazing thing to sit back and watch them and think, what's going on over there? But the scripture tells us in Acts 2.44 that all that believed were together. Yep. It wasn't easy to follow Christ in that first century. Times were tough. There was persecution from the Roman Empire. Just the idea that you might be a Christian may get you hung up on a cross, may get you fed to a lion, may get you burned at the stake. Who knows what horrors could happen to you. But they knew if they stayed together in fellowship and in community, then they needed each other, they'd have strength in their numbers because they could protect one another. They could hold one another up and give each other strength and courage. Times were rough. Christianity has kind of taken it on the chin these days because of a fundamentalist Christianity, the, um, the White House style of Christianity that, you know, it just doesn't seem to be too full of Christ to me. Um, I don't know how you feel about that. It's just different to me that people who claim to be Christians are doing things exactly the opposite of what Christ told us to do Amen. and of how Christ behaved himself. So Christianity today is kind of tough. So here we are, kind of a persecuted people. Not because of what we believe, but what a big Christianity believes all over. But this radical inclusive message that Jesus brought to the world is barely evident in the Christianity that we see today out in our world. Amen. It isn't easy for us to follow Christ and truly live as he lived. There's discouragement. There's temptation. Ooh. There's apathy. You know, we all have failures. We all suffer from materialism. Yes, yes. We have unbelieving families and friends around us. There's doubt. There's rejection from the main Christian church. Our little group is still not quite accepted as being real Christians because how can you be real Christians and be who you are? Right? Have you ever heard that in your life? <laughs> right? That's okay because God hasn't left us on our own to run the race and fight the battle because God gave us each other. Yes. Our text today shows the proper focus of the family of God, the community of believers. Acts 2.42 says they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayer. The teaching they devoted themselves to was the message about Jesus that they had received from the disciples. That's the same thing we're doing here. We're teaching one another the same thing Jesus said to his disciples. Where the disciples' apostles in, included the teaching of the words and the actions and the teachings of the Lord. The breaking of bread is a reference to the Lord's Supper that they serve. Yes. We do this today. Yeah, this yeah. is the Lord's Supper, we call it. The communion table, the Eucharist, we call it a number of things. But this is exactly what they did in their time. It also referred to other times when they gathered together around a common meal. Teaching, fellowship, praying, the Lord's table, all those were their focal points in their community. Amen. Does this sound like any community you know? Yep. Yeah, it sounds just like you guys right here. I know if there's a good meal to be had, there's going to be some MCCBR folk up in there. <laughs> right? Amen. I know that little fellowship hall right over there has had a many a meal served in it. Because you guys know, you understand that that fellowship you have together over a meal is what binds you together. Amen. It's what Amen. makes you family. Amen. It's important. It is as important as this communion table. 
on a different level. But just as important as sharing the meal here is sharing the meal there. Because Amen. that's real life. And that's yeah. where we rub up against the other porcupines in the congregation. Yes. <laughs> you took the last chicken leg? What? I had a pastor and a, and a female entertainer one time fight over the ham hock in a pot of greens. Whoa. I know what fellowship is. <laughs> the church or the local community of believers is essential to our spiritual well-being. In the New Testament, there's no Lone Ranger Christians. There's none sitting way over here by their little cells. Because believers needed each other. They needed to be there for each other. And just like them, we need each other. We need to be there for each other. God expects us to be there for each other. Yes, That's part of what being church is all about. God has ordained that we play a vital part in each other's faith. God has a purpose for putting us together. In our scripture today, Luke informs us that all the believers were one in heart and mind. Wow, what a concept. I don't think I've ever really seen that. But ooh, it's a great thing to work toward. Yes. It's a great vision to have for a church to be of one heart and one mind. Yes. They were united into Christ in a community of faith, and they made every effort to be led by God's Spirit to think and act like Christ. Now, if we would just take a moment every time we're about to say, do, or behave a certain way, if we would stop and say, okay, would Christ be saying this? Would Christ be doing this? What would Jesus do? If we would just, what would Jesus do every time we have an interaction at church? We could eliminate a lot of stress. Amen. We could eliminate a lot of misunderstandings because that's what most church issues arise out of is a misunderstanding. What you heard was, but what I meant was, stop before you speak, before you act, and ask yourself that question. Is this, how is this going to be received by the people around me? Yeah. During the times when we're overwhelmed by trials and heartaches and just the burdens of life, we need to be strengthened and encouraged by fellow believers. Amen. When we wonder if God really does love us and care for us, we find that in God's people because through other Christians, we see and we sense and we get to know God's love and God's care. When we're loved and cared for by another believer, especially during painful times, we gain a new sense of God's love at work through others in our lives. So think of it that way. There are times when you are the expression of God's love in somebody else's life. Yes. Think about that. That's an awesome thought. This is why we can't afford to stand alone, to go in on our own. Like those giant redwood trees, we need each other. We need the community of faith. So you guys remember a few winters ago, there was a really heavy snowfall in the, along the eastern edge of the country. And heavy snowfalls especially fell in the area of North Carolina. They had a week-long, six-inch heavy snowfall. And it was interesting to see the effect along I-40, the interstate through there, because, you know, most... Interstates in the south are lined with pine trees. We, we got more pine trees than anything down here. Yep. And next to the highway, you saw these pine trees, and the, as the snow fell down, it landed on the branches. And they, and they bowed down a little bit, and they bowed down a little bit more, and more snow fell, and it was heavy, wet snow. More snow fell. And you would see those pine trees leaning over onto the pine tree next to them leaning over onto the pine tree and it was like a domino effect they just kept on and kept on as you went down the road they were leaning into each other that's what we need to do when we get through the storms of life when times are heavy on us we need to lean Amen. on each other yes. i want you standing close to me you porcupines i want to feel you next to me so when i have a hard time i can lean over on you yes. that's right the closer we stand in the community the more we'll be able to hold up under life's trials throughout our lives and especially during the tough times God desires us to strengthen and empower one another through the community of believers God expects us to support each other that's why you need to be an active part of this church right now you're going through some trials right now you have no settled pastor in your pulpit well from what I can see you porcupines are doing just fine. Y'all leaning on each other. Amen. You have people up here. You have people coming to speak for you, some from within you. 
You have people up here leading prayer. You're caring for one another. You're reaching out to one another. I sat in the prayer circle this morning and heard prayers for people that aren't here. Their names were brought up and prayed for. We're still concerned for you. We, we wonder what, how you are. We want you to do well. That's what a community of believers does. It stands together, even during the hard times. Yes. This community of faith is a place where you can find opportunities to minister because our union with Christ creates ministry opportunities. Amen. Verse 44 says, They were all together and had everything in common. Now, their ministry to each other included sharing all their material goods, and according to the scripture, they sold everything they had and gave it all to the church. I'm not advocating that. I'm just telling you right now. <laughs> um, you need what you need to survive, and you work hard for it, and you deserve it. But I also know that we have surplus, and we're able to reach out and help others because we have way more than we need. Kay and I, uh, about s seven or eight months ago, started on this plan. We sold everything we owned, everything, except for some clothes, a few dishes, a bedroom suit that we gave to her sister, which we ended up getting back. <laughs> and we put our house on the market, and we were selling it all, and we bought a motorhome, and that was what we were going to do. We were going to travel around in our motorhome and just live. But God had a different plan, which is great with us. And we're all flexible and ready to do what God says. But the cool thing about it was, as we started dragging out stuff, you would not believe the junk we had in our house. I, I know we, it's 25 years together. We, we've amassed some junk. We had closets full of junk. We had drawers full of junk. A garage, two-car garage you couldn't park a car in. It was full of junk. Oh, my Lord, at the stuff we had. And it was cathartic. It just felt so. At first, it was like, I don't know if I want to let that go. You know, great-grandma so-and-so once touched it or whatever. Uh-uh. We let that stuff go. And as we did... We became lighter in spirit and lighter in spirit and lighter in spirit until we had an empty house. And that was fine with us. We still had everything we needed packed in that little 35-foot motorhome. Yep. So I know it can be done. you got stuff you need to get rid of, boys and girls. That's all I'm going to say to you. But anyway, <laughs> back to the sermon. If we're not ministering to one another, then a lot of needs go unmet. So we have to get up off of ours sometimes to help somebody with theirs, is what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. I know you have an active community outreach ministry here. You always collected something for somebody. Let's see, there was a candy raids. I remember yes. that. That's that's important, right? Yeah. There's a sometimes it's making groceries. Yes. Yeah. Well, I see y'all making groceries right here for other people. You just fill up that cart and send it on to the next person who needs it. I know every Christmas y'all make bags for some group nearby here. I know it happens. Nursing home. And I know when Pastor Keith was here because he loved animals so much, y'all would even bring in dog food and cat food and stuff like that. Amen. Tell me y'all don't understand about reaching out and ministering others. I know you do. You got that. The community of faith is also a source of guidance for us. Sometimes it gives us direction. Sometimes it gives us gentle, loving correction. Those are important words. You know, the Bible tells us to go to one another and gently, lovingly correct them if you see somebody doing something that's harmful to themselves. Remember that. Gentle and loving. Yes. Kind. Pull your quills in and go minister to somebody. We need a community of believers because not, not one of us is as smart as all of us together. Amen. Because somewhere in their life, somebody in this very sanctuary has experienced the very trial you're going through at this time. Amen. Trust me on that. Nothing is new under the sun. Nothing that's happening to you has never, ever happened to anybody else in the world. And God lets us go through those trials so that we can turn around and become a wounded healer to help someone else through a similar trial. So don't curse God for the hard times of your life. Praise God, because it's going to give you an opportunity to minister somewhere. And if you're in the middle of a trial right now, look around and find somebody. Share your story with them, and I guarantee you, you'll find support and encouragement somewhere. Amen. God uses us to guide others through their earthly pilgrimage, because we can, we can spare them some of the pain 
that we've been through ourselves, and that's important to me. I know I've had some painful times in my life, and I can turn around and say, hey, baby, I experienced that too. Let me help you through this. It's important. God gives us wisdom for the journey as we study the Word and pray together. We need to look to the Lord's people to be more carefully guided on a good path in life. You know, I can trust you to help me stay on that good path. As we share our lives together, God counsels us with advice, and that improves our relationships with God. It also improves our relationships with each other. Yes. God get, guides us during proper priorities, values, morals, and ethics. That's how God guides us. And we turn around and share those with somebody else. Amen. Through our interactions with each other and through the study of the Word, we can make right choices, good choices for ourselves, and spare yes. ourselves a little pain down the road, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Through the community of faith, we're guided into paths of righteousness, and we're able to resist the deadly ways of the world. It's a fact. We all need the community of faith more than we realize, because outside these doors, there's a world lurking, just waiting, like a, just waiting to pounce on you. So when you come in here, be strengthened, love one another, strengthen one another to yes. walk outside of there. Now, I'm going to tell you, being in a community of faith isn't without its difficulties difficulties and its frustrations it can't be any other way because it's made up of people yep. right we're all just humans none of us are perfect if we were we wouldn't need to be here <laughs> the mark of community true biblical community is not the absence of conflict it's not the absence of difficulties it's the presence <clears throat> of a reconciling spirit Amen. Amen. Yeah, every now and then, in our humanness, we're all going to do things to rub others the wrong way. We're all going to do things to offend others. It just happens because we're people. And at times, we're all going to be hurt, maybe really deeply hurt. And we're also going to be the ones that give that hurt to others. Not intentionally. I can't believe anybody in here would intentionally hurt one another. It happens because we're people. We're just sinful human people. It's just the way it is. Our old sinful nature just causes us problems. But we can make an unwavering commitment to this community of believers so that we can be strengthened. We can find places of ministry, and we can find much-needed guidance in our lives. There was a famous philosopher named Schopenhauer. He once used an illustration of porcupines. And I found this to be just like the church that I've experienced in my life. You see, he said a group of porcupines were marooned one bitter, cold night in the middle of a large frozen field. Now picture that. All these porcupines. Frozen field. Bitter, bitter cold. There was no way to escape the biting wind. It was whistling down through there. Just cold. I mean, they couldn't burrow into the ground because it was frozen solid. You ever had ground like that, frozen solid, you can't even get a shovel into it? That's where these porcupines were. So they huddled up together to keep warm. Well, their sharp quills began to poke each other and pinch each other and hurt a little bit. And the closer they moved together, the more poking and pinching went on and the more uncomfortable it got, right? The more the pain increased. Some of them just couldn't bear it. I can't stand it, not one more minute, they said, and they wandered off on their own. Well, unfortunately, those froze to death during the night. Yep. In the morning, their friends that had spent the night together rather uncomfortably found them there, frozen. Those who were able to overlook the pain and discomfort, however, they managed to survive the night together. Church is kind of like that. We all kind of poke and pinch and irritate one another, and I get too close to you, and oh, I can't stand by you some more. i got to back up. we got to be like those porcupines, y'all. In our humanness, there's times when we hurt each other, and our tendency is to take our toys and go home. Y'all don't know people that have done You've probably done it yourself. I have. I'm not dealing with y'all one more minute. You're not doing it my way, which is the right way. And so I'm just going to tell you right now, I'm taking my toys, and I'm going home. I'm done with you. <laughs> Thankfully, God doesn't let us stay away for too long most of the time, and God will start weaving back into our thoughts and into our spirits and 
Pull us back like a fish on a line, just a little at a time. Let us give a little until all of a sudden we're back in church. Thank you, Jesus, for that patient, patient recalling of us to community. We have to resist that tendency to take our toys and go home. We can't survive on our own. I know you guys know people who've left the church who have struggled. I mean, they're just struggling out there, and you want so much to love them, but they remember the porcupines, and they don't want to come back, right? We have to accept the fact that cuddling with porcupines is going to hurt sometimes. But if we want to survive, we have to deal with the pain and cuddle closer anyway. We were created for community. The journey of life and faith is hard. It's difficult. It's painful for every person. That's true in the world outside these walls, but it's also true inside these walls. Sometimes it's painful. Sometimes it's difficult. But we have to learn to deal with one another anyway. God has given us the family of God and the fellowship of believers. In Christ, we are a community of faith, a special place where we can minister and be ministered to. Amen. We need each other. So the community of faith needs to be a priority in our lives. <clears throat> Acts 2.42 says the believers devoted themselves to fellowship. So my charge to you this morning, my friends, is to devote yourself to the fellowship of MCC Baton Rouge Amen. and cuddle up with the porcupines here <laughs> in your family of God. Amen. 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 Again, thank you for watching our worship message on YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to get notified of our other posts. You can also watch our worship service in its entirety at facebook.com slash mccbr. And you can watch us live every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Central streaming on Facebook. Please also visit our webpage at mccbr.org where you can see our calendar of events and learn more about our church and our denomination. Please also like our Facebook page so you'll be notified of upcoming events and other posts. Thanks again and have a very blessed day. No one can deny what the Spirit is doing. And nothing can replace or destroy the work in you. Oh, oh, oh. So when it seems like no one cares and even God is forsaken. Remember that those he called are justified, are glorified, not even life or death, not even on.